Hey guys, and welcome back to the Pennies to Pounds podcast with your host Kia. And this is the podcast where we aim to dispel your myths, simplify difficult financial jargon, and rectify your own personal problems. We are back, and we are back with a bang. Because the oh episode gosh. we've got today is just going to be full of gems. It's going to be so good. And I'm super excited. But before we get into that, our guests need to introduce themselves. So guest, who are you, please? And don't hold back. Oh who gosh. are you? Who am I? Who are Hi, you? I'm Moni. I am a 20-year-old entrepreneur, content creator, and also one of Lord Sugar's youngest business partners. Insane. Insane. We're not going to touch on Lord Sugar just yet. But just yet. that is insane. So I want to start from the beginning. Yeah, because I feel okay. like it's always nice to see where you come from. Okay. So you're 20. I am. But how did you get here? Because like everyone else, you know, we go to school. You mentioned you went to university when we spoke yeah. prior to recording. How did we get to the business? I mean, the entrepreneurial spirit, the mind, how did we get there? Talk us through it. Do you know what? Everyone says this. And a lot of the time for me, it's like I blinked and it happened. <laughs> it, really? It feels crazy to me. A lot of things happen very, very quick. And I think because I'm a person that moves really, really fast, things just happen. <laughs> and I can't explain them all the time. But I started my business when I was 17. I was 17 when I first launched Trezor and well, it obviously wasn't what it was t today, but I launched in my first year of college while I was still studying. And then it kind of became what it was during COVID because we were not allowed back in college. I didn't finish college. We had a lot of time on our hands and it just kind of was the only thing I had to do. So it, it grew and then it just grew to what it is now. <laughs> like That is so crazy. Okay, but what gave yeah. you the idea that you wanted you know, to start a jewelry So business. I always say this, I always say, right, that in my culture, I'm South Asian. Mm -hmm. In my culture are like grandmas, our moms, our aunties wear like big chunky gold bangles all over their wrists and stuff. And it's really um, part of our culture to wear big gold jewelry, especially like during weddings and special events and things like that. So growing up, I had always seen that. I'd always seen that there's so much gold and so much, and I found it so beautiful. And every girl loves a bit of gold and glitter, you know? 100%. We all love it. And I just felt like I really wanted to wear this kind of stuff. But when you're like 17, 18, you can't afford gold. You can't afford real gold. Yeah. It doesn't work. And the only other alternative is like your high street jewelry that, you know, you wash your hands and it turns your fingers green. Yeah. Right? And it gives you a rash and it's and it's bad for you. And it doesn't even look like real gold a lot of the time. So I really wanted to kind of combat that problem and bring something to market that looks and acts like real gold, but costs nothing close to real gold to my consumers. That is insane. And anyone who's looking right now, I am currently sporting yes. <laughs> the brand. Like it's actually insane. Like yeah. it's actually- wear the You have to. The, this That's necklace, I've got my little cane necklace here. Yes. I am so happy it's because so I love jewelry so much. I'm not going to put it on right now, but I'm- Everyone gonna, loves gold jewelry. Yeah, this is going to go- You can't not. Like, yeah. Yeah. Exactly, how can you not? You know people who pick silver over gold? Yes. They scare me. Yeah. <laughs> take, take your silver ring off now. Like, I, I, know, I know, I know. Remove it. Yeah, remember, <laughs> it wasn't seen, it wasn't seen. No, 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 no. Okay, so I want to ask you, right. So you mentioned yeah. COVID was when things took off a lot more. Yeah. So what were some of the challenges that you faced? I mean, obviously COVID. Yeah. Outside of that, but actually running a business, what were some of the challenges that you faced? I think when I first started, one of the main things was that I was so young. I was 17. During COVID, I was like 18, 19. And I didn't know anything. I did not know anything. No one, like my dad was is an academic. Like he's very much like stay at uni, go to uni, do uni. And he um, he never really could say, okay, this is what's going to grow your business. That's what's going to grow your business. And I didn't really have anyone else at the time. I didn't have a mentor. I didn't have anything. And so it was very much that I had to learn everything myself. That was a massive hurdle to overcome. Like I, I really needed to, like, I don't know. I really needed that kind of guidance when I was at that age, but I had it from nowhere. So that was one of my main, main things that that kind of was a hurdle. But I learned it all online myself in the end anyway. <laughs> That's wow. kind of what I did. Yeah, like everything everything I know, I, it's self-taught and I'm self, like I learned myself. Cause I, I, even when I went to uni, I did marketing, but I dropped mm. out like six months in, which is really bad. But <laughs> I didn't even finish hey. one year. I'm, I'm a dropout, but. But yeah. you are doing really well. Thank you. And I feel like <laughs> it's you. important to highlight that, you know, academia is great for yeah, some people, it but is. it's not necessary. For everyone. No, it's not. And speaking about self-taught, you are the queen of TikTok. I oh see gosh. you everywhere. <laughs> everywhere. I'm in so annoying, way. aren't I? I'm like no. in everyone's face. <laughs> I'm no, but there. it's great though, because I feel like now in this age, yeah. we are seeing careers take off. We're seeing businesses mm. blow up. And a lot of people are trying to learn how to do that. And mm. you are helping people do that. But how did you figure out the, the, the magic like, potion to actually do that? Because I have tried TikTok. 
<laughs> and the videos I spend two seconds on yeah. blow up. The ones I'm like, this is going to bang. This Doesn't is the bang. one. <laughs> 200 views. Like, how did you manage to figure out? Because your numbers are absolutely insane. Like, I've never seen any of your videos have less than 10K. Yeah. Like, it's insane. <laughs> I don't know how you've done it. I don't know. TikTok is, is it's like, a, there's a science behind it, right? Like, it's kind of like, once you figured out a formula, you kind of just stick to it. So you, you can build a strategy around whatever kind of account you're creating. Like, for example, if it's a business account, if it's a restaurant or if it's a personal brand, that kind of thing. Once you really, really figure out your niche, it's easy to just get all your videos to work for you. Okay, right. So you have to give us a gem then. Like, give give us one top tip. If you're telling anyone who's looking to kind of boost their TikTok account, yeah. what's one thing that you'd say? One thing I would say is look at people who are doing better than you who are the same as you. For example, if I if I want to be a finance content creator, I'm going to go and find someone who does amazing content, who's got loads of views, and I'm going to replicate their content in my own style, but it's going to get more views because I'm going to figure out what they've done wrong and do it better. That is, look at that, smart. <laughs> very, 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 very smart. Now I want to go and move on to almost the elephant in the room. Oh my gosh. Right? <laughs> yeah. So we have all seen, when, look, me, I love entrepreneurship and yep. I've had it since I was young. So one of my favorite shows naturally. Oh my gosh. Was The Apprentice. You know, funny yeah. enough, it's not my favorite show. Is it not your favorite? No. Okay, what's your favorite show before we carry on? I don't have a favorite show. You know, do you watch TV? Yeah, sometimes. Sometimes, oh, sometimes. When you have Netflix, time. Netflix, so if you have time. Yeah, yeah. When, when you have time. Yeah. Oh, fair, fair enough. But do you know what? TikTok has ruined my attention span. Oh my gosh. I can only watch 10 second videos and I'm done. Anything longer than that, and I'm not bored. <laughs> yeah, I'm out. I'm out. Honestly, TikTok is yeah. great, but it's ruined some <laughs> it's things. Great. But when I was growing up, yeah. Apprentice yeah. was my thing, right? Because I was the girl in school who was selling cookies and donuts. I love that. So that, do you know what I mean? I that, that, that. that little hustle. I had yeah. that from young. So I love watching The Apprentice. Yeah. No sugar. You, I went through through like years where I'm like, yeah, I'd love to apply for The Apprentice. And yeah. other years, I'm like, I don't think I can deal with being fired. I don't oh, think I've got yeah. it in me. I don't and that, think that public humiliation. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, I don't think people could. Remember me say, oh yeah, you're, you're the one who got fired. I don't think I can really go through that. I don't think I can live it down personally, Stress, right? Like... So I just used to watch it from afar. Yeah. And I always used to admire the people who got to work mm. with Lord Sugar. Now you have had that privilege yeah. without the public humiliation, without <laughs> having to go on The Apprentice. Yeah. So talk us through that because that is insane. There are people who would literally die to oh work gosh. with Lord Sugar and you have gotten us. Talk us through it. How did that come about? Um... Okay, so my mum watches The Apprentice, but I don't. And I've watched one series. I watched it with mum during lockdown. It was a series where Alana won, yeah, the cupcake girl. Yes. So cute, it was really cute. I was sat with my mum and she was like, well, why don't you apply? You can do this. And I was like, no. <laughs> I was like, absolutely not. But then it kind of sparked this like little interest in me. And so I went to stalk Lord Sugar on Twitter because everyone says like he, he tweets really funny stuff and he does, he's hilarious. <laughs> but he, he's always cussing someone out on Twitter. He is. But, uh, <laughs> So bad. Um, yeah, so I went to, to go look at his Twitter and he he posted like, this was during lockdown and he posted something like, small businesses reach out to me, blah, blah, blah. I'll give you some advice, something like that. And um, so I was like, you know what? He's telling people to DM him or, or tweet him. I'm gonna take the extra step. So I emailed people at his company. I didn't even know like what I wanted. I just was like, this is who I am. This is this. And you know, put me in touch with Lord Sugar. Like, no response. Another email. Another email, another email. I literally emailed him so many times, like put me in touch with him. They probably think it's this crazy lady, like oh, this, wow. this crazy stalker lady. And then um, one day I get an email back and it's literally from Lord Sugar himself. No. Yeah. Should I show you the email? Yeah, no, wait. So no assistant, no nothing, Lord Straight Sugar. Straight up Lord Sugar. I was like, who is no. this? No, he said, do you know what? He said, if, I will sort you out. I will, <laughs> she keeps emailing, send me her email. Yeah, I will deal with I this. will deal with it directly. Yeah, I, wow. When I saw it, and yeah, so here. Um, yeah. No way. Okay, cool, right, I'm reading it. Yeah. Micro gave me your email. You may also know that my company invests in young startups. I'm very interested in your jewelry business. I would welcome to discuss more with you to see if we can invest. Yeah. Wow. I know, isn't it crazy? That's insane. And then you know what's hilarious? He sent that on the 4th of June and then I didn't reply. And then on the 6th of June, he resent it to me. No. How can you, wait, so first and foremost. I was scared. You ignored Lord Sugar. I was scared. <laughs> Lord Sugar said, I've got money to throw at your business. And you said, no sir, <laughs> no sir. I said, what? Cause he emailed me on like a Friday night. I was like, let me not bother him till Monday now. And then on Sunday he resent it. I was like, Sorry. I feel like Lord Sugar is someone who works all the time. I feel like he's always on his emails. I feel like yeah, he's all, all a hard worker. All the time, yeah. Wow, okay, cool. So he's he recently email now. Yeah. This time, obviously, you have to respond on Sunday. Yeah. So what happened I'm next? Like, I'm like, I'm on my way. He's like, <laughs> I'm coming. He was like, yeah, like, call Mike Ray on this number. So I called Mike and um, 
he was like, yeah, blah, blah, blah. Come down to Loughton. Loughton is like the other side of London, right? Like, yeah. like Essex. Yeah. And obviously I'm from Birmingham. That's so I traveled, me. it was quite far. Yeah. <laughs> I traveled, it was like three and a half hours or something. Oh my god! And I was 40 minutes late. <gasps> yeah, and I was so scared. I was like, if I get there, he's gonna be so angry at me. Oh my gosh. Yeah, and when I went there, we sat down, I showed him my jewelry, I showed him my F offering, he loved it. That yes, was like, that's the one I'm, I'm wearing right now. Yep, so I've got that right now. We always mm-hmm. wear yeah. It was scary because I was like, with, with this kind of ring, for a person like him, it can be a really hit or miss. Like you don't exactly. know if he's gonna love know. it or hate it. Because I mean, he, it's kind of on brand for him though, right? Like to be like a bit sweary, a bit like. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. Plus he swears a lot on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> he does, I've seen his tweets, he does. Yeah. But it was just, I don't know, it was just a thing. Like he saw my jewelry and he was like, oh, blah, blah, blah. He really liked the jewelry. And then he was there for like 10 minutes and he was like, okay, well, I'll go, I'm off to Paris now. And I was like, I'm like, okay. Okay. <laughs> Have fun, enjoy. <laughs> then I was sat there, like when I went there, it was him, his advisor, uh, an accountant, two accountants, like, do you know, like, yeah, like grown men around this table. And I was strolling up in my little summer dress. Like, <laughs> Hi, here's my jewelry. Like, you know, it was so bad. And yeah, I don't know what happened. I spoke with them. And then at, by the end of the meeting, they were like, you know what? We're gonna give you an offer to invest. Go home and think about it. And I was like, yeah, I will go home and think about it. <laughs> really and truly, like, you needed yes, no time like, whatsoever. Like yeah, none, I'm taking it. None, of course I was gonna take it. And you know, it's what people would say to me like, well, oh, why, why have you given away 50% of your business? Like, it's really, really, it's your business. You built it. Like I've literally given my business away to a, a billion, a famous billionaire. Yeah. Do you think it's not, I, this wasn't strategic. Like yeah. it, I, it was so beneficial to me to be associated with someone like him that anything I do in the future, it will be easy. It opened so many doors for me. hundred percent. Yeah. hundred percent. So that happened Yeah. and he invested. So what did that look like for you in terms of what you was doing before the investment? How did that change getting that investment from him? So I think it actually became a lot diffi- more difficult. Oh. Yeah, it became a lot more difficult because I was operating on a smaller scale and it's kind of like when you're given a lump sum of money, you're like, okay, time to spend it. Like, yeah. It's time to spend it. So I, I, you know, spent money here and there and got a bigger office and got this and got new lines of jewelry and all sorts of stuff like that. And it, it was like, Everything changed, everything changed within my business. And, you know, I use his accountants and they, they manage the numbers and things like that. And I have board meetings now and I have an investor to, to, to speak to like, and it, the dynamic of what my business used to be became so much more kind of serious. Of course. Became so much more serious. Cause you know, I'm out here I'm like, like, you know, putting my accounts up and things like that. I was like, just, it was just jewelry and vibes before. It was actually just, <laughs> seriously, jewelry and vibes. Jewelry and vibes yeah. yeah. And now it's like, you know, Marnie, where's the money? And I have to explain where the money is. Well, I have to be like, this is what I've done this month. Or this is why the numbers are low. This is why the numbers are high, like that kind of thing. So it, it was like, and because I had never been exposed to a corporate environment before, because I'm 20, I've never had a corporate job. I never even bothered with, like to finish uni. I had never been exposed to a corporate environment. It, it was very, it was like a, a culture shock. Of course. Yeah, I was like, I was like, okay, before, I would spend money here and on ads, or not, not ads, I would like do this and it would make me money and I would be like, okay, yeah, I'm happy. And then now it's like, I do something and make money and it's like, okay, how can you do it better to make more money? Wow, right? yeah. yeah. Cause with them, obviously what's like, my business like before he invested had turned over maybe like 200 grand, something mm-hmm. like that. In which, is, which is amazing by the way. Thank you. That's <laughs> thank really, you. really good. I want you to know yeah, that. Yeah, thank you so much. Amazing. <laughs> yeah, it turned over like that much. And, but to them, because he's a billionaire and because he has companies that turn over millions and millions, it's like, okay, this is great, but we're get, we need to get your numbers up. Wow. This is not enough for us, yeah. which is true. And which is why I wanted this as well. It's like, I wanted to grow the company with their help. And it was like, because like I mentioned before, I had always wanted that mentor. This is what it was for me. Yeah. That is like the idol mentor. Like yeah. you said you were a mentor. People find people I got the, on LinkedIn. Literally. You literally <laughs> got Lord Sugar. Yeah. Okay, now, so we're talking, you've got the investment. Obviously now you have been exposed to this corporate yeah. environment. A big thing that a lot of people find difficult, and I know myself, building up my platform, is building a team. Yeah. Now, was that oh. an issue for you? How How is that? Because a lot of people, I remember I was the same. I used to kind of like lock myself down and say, you know, I can do everything. I yeah. can do all the socials. I can do all of this. I can grow the community. And really and truly, you can't do it by yourself. But yeah. I think there is this fear that this is your baby. and You don't want to give it to the wrong people, people who won't appreciate it. So how did you find yeah. that building a team? So I think I still struggle. I still struggle to say, like I started kind of building a team March last year. Mm-hmm. Um, since then, the I like, you know, I, I sacked people, people resigned, I lost people, like so much has, has, so many people have been and gone because I 
at my age as well, I'm, listen, I find it hard to like judge who, who's a good friend or not, let alone who's going to be a good employee. Right. Like, come on. It's true. I, yeah, so I, I would like give people chances and it wouldn't work or I would give people chances and they would leave because they were too stressed or things like that. I literally have just like one, one main employee at the moment who I feel like- That's a good one. You know work. what, she's, she's a good one. She's a good yeah. one. She's a good egg. And she, she's like, you know, someone who is so driven and that's really what I look for in mm -hmm. employees and people who are part of the team to be driven and to know that a business like this is in its growth stage. Yeah. Look at what I was a year ago. I was in my bedroom. Yeah. Three, no, a year and a half ago. I was in my bedroom. That's insane. Yeah. It was literally nothing. It was just me. And people need to have this vision of like, okay, if I get in now, I'm going to be better. Like this girl, if she sticks with me for five years, she's going to have like a manager role. 100%. She's going to be, she's going to be on a salary three, four times what she's on now. Yeah. Because this is what the business is about for me. Like I wanted to provide opportunities where like, if people get in early and, and really help me build this, it benefits them just as much. And I'm, and I never was in this just because I wanted money. Like it was never about like numbers and stuff for me. It was always about who can I work with? That's going to be amazing. Mm. What can I do to make a difference? Yeah. That's amazing. Thank you. You know, that's, that's so amazing. But I think it's true. I think it's hard to discern or even know sometimes people like come across like they're going to be a great employee. Yeah, exactly. And then you get into it, you know, actually maybe they're not the correct fit. Yeah. So, you know, it's always that learning curve. Yeah. But and it's really incredible. hard to sack people, you know, oh my gosh, it's so hard. Like that, that is a skill that people don't tell you. I yeah. mean, bringing on people is great, but actually having to let people go, I've had to do that before and mm. it's not enjoyable. And I, the I, very I first like, time I've done yeah. it was so sad. I was like shaking. I was like, yeah, you just have to do this. I talk to you. Because <laughs> it's a lot, but yeah. it's, it, building that up in a, yeah. is a skill in itself. That is incredible. That's Thank absolutely you. cool. Wow. Wow. Okay. Right. I also want to ask you, what's been yeah. one of the major challenges in your business? One of the major challenges. Uh, you know what? I'd say there are a lot of painful and expensive mistakes in business. Mm. So many. Mm -hmm. uh, and one of my main challenges has been like dealing with things that I, I don't so much understand that I can't get to understand. For example, like PPC and ads, paid ads, right? Yeah. I'm not interested in it. Genuinely, in my heart, I don't feel it. I'm not interested, but I have to be because that's how I can scale my business. Yeah. And I made so many mistakes with, with agencies in the beginning. And even now I still make th these mistakes and it feels like I can't get my head around it. And it just makes it so difficult to deal with. Yeah. And I wasted so much money on it. <laughs> so much. You waste so much money yeah, on of ads. Yeah, of course, yeah. Just through money. But that's literally been one of the, the things that just has got to me the most. It's like trying to figure out ads. It's so stressful. So have you... Geared yourself more towards organic. Like I said, you are killing it on socials right yeah, now. Yeah, we were always organic in the beginning, but to truly scale a business, you really want to get ads kind of running in the background, like just just there, like yeah. kind of retargeting. Yeah, of course. And it doesn't like it's it's good enough to get organic sales, but how much can you really push organically? Yeah. You do want to put some money behind it, and it's just difficult to get it get the right the right agency to do the right thing. One hundred percent. How have you found it with your social life? So with friends, oh because gosh. that is, that's a big deal. What social life? There's no, no <laughs> I was gonna, well, I was gonna say how you found the balance, but you know. No, no I'm really honestly, bad at that. I'm so bad at that. Really? Yeah, because you know what, like, my, like I said, I, my business grew in lockdown pretty much. Mm. I was very, very isolated because I literally, well, obviously we were in lockdown. We couldn't really talk to anyone anyway. And I didn't bother to socialize online because I was so busy with Trezor mm. and I think I've only now in the past couple of months been able to take a step back and think, you know what, I need to, I need to talk to people. I'm going to go crazy. I need to talk to real people. Real people. <laughs> yeah, real people. So yeah, like I, I think I've started to be a bit more social now compared to what I was. And, you know, like I have a lot of my friends I met online and, nice. and you know, I see them all the time and it's amazing. But again, like Trezor does take a very big chunk out of my life kind yeah, of thing. Of course. So it's kind of, I think I haven't mastered the balance yet. Yes, yeah. But, yeah, I'll figure it out. I'll figure out. Yeah, you'll figure out. You'll figure out. What is what is your favorite piece of jewelry that you got that you sell? My F offering. Of Do you know what? It's it's a great ring. Of it's obviously, my best seller. Do is you know, it? Yeah, I sell at least like twenty every day. That's insane. Yeah. That is people sick. love it. People absolutely it's, love it. It's really cool. Yeah. It's really. really they find cool. it hilarious. They find it so funny. When when you gave me this because you didn't tell me, so I yeah. took it out. I was like, oh, that's a, oh, that's what does that say? Oh, yeah. that's a that's an interesting <laughs> message. No, it's it's so sick. Yeah, it's it's cool. so sick. What has been the biggest lesson that you've learned growing the business? The biggest lesson that I've learned. You know, I'd say I learn a lesson every day, man. Like I learn some big lesson every day. Every day I think, okay, I've learned my lesson and the next day I have to learn it all over again. <laughs> yeah. like, stuff always happens. Always. That's probably the biggest lesson is that you're it's never true. gonna stop learning. It's true. It's always, you know, figuring stuff out and and coming up with a new solution along the way. Yeah. I don't know. I think that's a beauty in business though, isn't it? Like learning it's all nice. the time. It's I nice. like I'm a dropout, but I never stop learning ever. That's the thing, but I, I feel like 
people have this stigma around if you don't go to university, you drop out of university, then you're not, you're not smart, people have carried yeah. on. But there are, le- there are lessons to learn all the time. Seriously. And it's like, there's no teacher here to tell me what to do, you know? <laughs> exactly, exactly. Do you know one thing I learned recently? It's yeah. not to do with business, sorry guys, but <laughs> this is gonna sound really silly because you know, right? And you know because we had coffee before we recorded <laughs> this. I found out literally at the beginning of this week, yeah. you know ice mockers, yeah. that they have coffee in it? So I was like, guys, I've never had a coffee before. I was going around that same for years. I've never had a coffee before. <laughs> I had no idea. Did you not taste it? No. But you know what? Mockers are nasty. It's basically a cold hot chocolate. That's what it's I thought. Milk. That's what I thought. And everyone was like, it's got coffee in it. Yeah. I can't believe I've been a coffee drinker since 17. Oh my God. <laughs> this, is, this is insane. This is like blowing my you're mind. You're part of the club. You're, I'm you're part of the club. Drinker. And that's, that's what I've learned. That's, wow. That's what I've learned. That is so funny. Yeah, I'm, genuinely, I had that. no idea. Oh that's God. what I'm saying. When oh I realized, God. wow, you do not stop learning ever yeah. <laughs> in life. You never that stop. The truth? Yeah, you never stop learning. <laughs> so when it comes to you and Lord Sugar, yeah, are you guys, do you WhatsApp? Yeah. Do you IMS? You, we like, WhatsApp. You, you and Lord Sugar, what's he saying when your friends? LS, no, my guy, Lord Big Sugar. Doug. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine? Big Doug, big S. <laughs> oh my gosh. Do you know? Yeah, we literally just, it, like he'll send me, you know, it's hilarious. Oh my God. One time um, he he was in Paris and he was like, saw this jewelry market store and they had like toe rings and he took a picture and he WhatsApped it to me. And I was like, <laughs> so what do you want me to do with this? <laughs> I was like, what should I do? <laughs> you say toe rings need to go on it. He's like, yeah, no. toe rings. He's like, I want toe rings and on he, it. And he, yeah, he'll see like an ad on, it's this video he sent me one time. He's hilarious. He is so funny. There's a video on his iPad and he's yeah. got his phone and he's taking a video of the iPad, the video on the iPad. <laughs> he said to me, so he doesn't know about screen record. He has like, no Sarah. idea. <laughs> he said, no, let Do me just know, make sure you can. He's sick. Like, he's so cool. He's a billionaire and he's, yeah. and he's so smart. But like, at the end of the day, he's an old man. Like, he's 70, 75 now. Oh, because you're 75. He's 75. He's a good 75. Right? He's I wouldn't, I did not. I mean, still shouting yeah. at people, giving us all the bollocking. Like, yeah. he's great. He's great. Wow. <laughs> So you, you, him, do you ever send memes and stuff? You have a little yeah, like voice notes and that. Oh, you yeah, voice note? Yeah. Hey, Ellis. No, I don't know. I don't know why I'm making names. Literally. See, I feel like if that was me, he, he would cancel my investment if he, I said I swear. No, nah, but I just literally, I'm just always saying stuff to him. Oh, wait, here's a video, by the way. He sent me. See, it's a video of the iPad. No, but he's actually, he's actually recording the iPad. He's actually recording the he's iPad. He's genuinely recording. Do you know what? He's bless funny. Him. Bless, he's him. bless him. He's, yeah, bless him. Yeah. Like you're actually living people's dreams. And I, I just want to say- I like, feel like I'm in a dream sometimes. I feel like I'm going to wake up and it's going to be all God. <laughs> no, I think you have to commend yourself for that. Thank you're 20. You. Look at what you've, look at where we are. Even oh I've been so impressed just walking around your office. Absolutely insane. Thank you. What you've managed to build in this time at your age. So make, I hope you realize what you've done <laughs> and where you are. And I'm excited to see the next five years. So you oh at 25, gosh, yeah. you at 25. Unstoppable. Unstoppable. <laughs> ja- took the words out of my mouth. Literally unstoppable. But okay, so anyone so listening, watching, mm. if you could give three, two or three tips mm. to starting up a business or scaling or just things you've learned, whatever yeah. you want to want to give, two or three gems, mm. what would you say? Okay, one of the things I would say is in the beginning, I had little to no support. People found it funny, like, oh my God, her in a little jewelry business. Oh, you're still running your little jewelry business. I never let that get to me ever. I, honest to God, truly believed in my heart that I knew what was what was coming. I knew what was going to happen, and because I feel like because I had that blind faith in myself, it's what propelled me to get here. Because I never doubted myself for a second. I always thought, I don't care what these people are saying because I know what I achieve. I I know what my goals are, and I know that I'm going to go out of my way to achieve them. And if you are dead set on what you are ready to do. Go out and do it. It doesn't matter what anyone says. It doesn't matter if you've got no support. It doesn't matter if people are laughing at you. 100%. Just just do it. Just go ahead and do it. That's my my absolute main thing that I live by is just do it, ma'am. Honestly. Love that. I know. And my second thing is definitely about, about learning things yourself. I always say this. I always say, if you don't know, get to know. And if you, it's, this is the thing. Like, I get people DMing me like, oh, how did you do this? How did you do this? Go on Google. Google is free, guys. Google Google is literally free. free. YouTube is free. You can find any information. And even TikTok these days. You know how many things I've learned off TikTok? You can go and type in anything. Anything. How to make a chicken pot pie and it will come up. (laughs) Everything. (laughs) Whatever you want. Best believe I've done that before. (laughs) (laughs) Just get a new recipe for the day. It was dead specific because I've done that. But (laughs) you can learn anything. We're so blessed to live in this age where everything is readily available to us. We have so much free information that if you're not going out to get it, you're basically just asking for failure. Like the key to success is always learning things. And if you find a way to take initiative and learn them, you're going to be successful. 
This is incredible. <laughs> no, honestly, I'm so in awe. Thank you. <laughs> of you and what you've built and oh my gosh. where you are. No. Thank you <laughs> so much for coming to the podcast and sharing Thank with everyone. Thank you for having me. No, of it's course. Been fun. This, honestly, you are incredible. But for people listening <laughs> who are looking to get their gold jewelry and get the bling bling, yeah. where can they find you? They can find me at shoptresor.co.uk or they can find me at shop.tresor on Instagram. Amazing. Yeah. This is incredible. Everything's going to be in the description <laughs> anyway, so you can click through. But guys, we are done. Do you want to say goodbye? I'll, 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 I'll let you do the outro. So What's my outro? Just say thank you for listening to the Penny Thank pod. you for listening to the Pennies, Pennies to Pounds yeah. pod. Like, comment, subscribe. <laughs> and <laughs> back in next week. Come back, ne- come back again next week for... Who are you doing next week? I don't know. Well, this is... this is. Come back next week for a surprise. Surprise, surprise. guest. Yeah, surprise <laughs> guest. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much. We're back again next week, guys.